Hello, everybody. I'm Henry Adams from Colorado State University. Today, I'd like to give an introduction to Viator scripts and Czech simplicial complexes, and in particular, what is the difference between them? Um, these complexes are, are two of the most common complexes in applied topology, um, and there's a lot of theoretical work being done on them as well, in particular. Um, my research focuses a lot on the theory behind Viator scripts and Czech simplicial complexes. All right, so let me draw, show you some pictures. Um, this is a Mathematica demo that Jan Siegert at the University of Missouri and I created. Uh, you can find it on the research tab on my webpage and, and download it and play with it itself. You play with it yourself, but you can you know move points around on the screen or add points if you like, remove points, etc. cetera. Um, so there, I just added a point. I can also remove a point, um, et cetera. And what's being drawn here is the check complex, okay? And I have this little toggle where it's, which is varying a scale parameter. It's varying the radius of the balls. And somehow that determines what edges appear, what triangles appear, which tetrahedra appear, et cetera as we'll discuss. You can select this button if you instead want to draw the Viator Schrips complex. And the Viator Schrips complex looks much the same as the Czech complex. You know, as the balls grow, so does the Viator Schrips complex, but it's not clear what the, um, what the difference between them is. And that's what I want to explain today. Before I, I get into the math, let me just show you the main difference. All right, so right now we're on Viator Schrips, and here we go to check. You can see the main difference is that in Viator Schrips, these two triangles appear, whereas in, in the check complex, they don't. And the reason being is that in a Viator Schrips complex, whenever you have the three edges of a triangle, you necessarily have that triangle. So here's the Viator Schrips complex. Whereas in the check complex, just having the three edges alone doesn't mean you, ne you need to have the triangle. You also need to have a point of triple intersection of the three balls. So since there's no point of triple intersection right here, we don't have this triangle in the check complex, nor this one. We do have this triangle in the check complex because there is a point of triple intersection between those three balls. Okay, let's get into the math formulas. Let X be a metric space, and R be a scale parameter bigger than zero. The check complex has vertex set X. All right. And it has a simplex on vertices X naught, X one, all the way up through XK. So this is, those are just the names, the names of my vertices. It has a K simplex when the intersection of the corresponding balls around these points, xi, of radius r over two is not empty. Okay, couple comments. I'm drawing those balls in Euclidean space, but you could also uh, pick different spaces in which you want to grow those balls. I'm also using balls of radius r over two just to make the comparison between check complexes and Viator Schrips complexes a little more clear, but you could also use balls of radius r. People use both in the literature. And so, you know, at this particular scale parameter, we now see that, well, let, let's start at lower scale parameters. Okay, so at low scale parameters, the balls are all just, you know, single points. So none of the balls intersect. So our, our, via, our check complex is just the set of points. If I, if I raise the scale a little bit, I have these balls. Still no two balls intersect. So the check complex is just all the points. Now balls start to intersect. And when two balls intersect, I get an edge between those two points. Um, where's the first time where we have a triple intersection? Ah. Right here, this is our first triple intersection. Three balls have a point of triple intersection, so I have a triangle in the check complex. The check complex keeps and keeps growing, 
And let's get to this stage right here where I have all pairwise intersections in this triangle. So I have all three edges of the triangle, but I don't have a point of triple intersection. So I don't have the two simplex. And you grow this all the way until eventually you get the complete uh, simplex on all of your, your vertices. Okay. I'm now ready to define the viator schrips complex. The viator schrips complex has the same vertex set, set X, and it has a simplex when the pairwise distance between vertex I and J is at most R. And this is for all I and J varying from um, zero up to K. So in other words, we have a simplex when all of the edges have length at most r. In this picture right here, because this edge is the length at most r, this edge is length at most r, and this edge is length at most r, then in the viator schrips complex, which I'm about to switch to now, we have that simplex. Okay, so in much the same way as we increase the scale parameter r, the viator schrips complex is growing. Once you, um, once you have two points within distance r, you have edges. Once you have three points which are pairwise within distance r, then you have triangles. And we've highlighted the main difference between viator schrips and check. In viator schrips, um, you have this triangle as soon as all of the edges appear, whereas in check, the edges might appear before the point of triple intersection giving the triangle. Even though we started with points in the plane in this example, we do have tetrahedra and higher dimensional simplices in these complexes. All right, couple of comments. The check complex is better for theory usually, just because the check complex is homotopy equivalent or has the same topological um, properties as the union of the balls. Um, in practice, however, the check complex is a little harder to compute because you need to detect these three-fold intersections or k-fold intersections. So in practice, people do computations more frequently with the viator schrips complex. Um, both are important in theory, both are important in computations, both are computable, but I would say a, a, a first approximation would be the check complex is used more in theory and the viator schrips complex is used more in, in computations. Are they related to each other at all? I'll end by giving the following relationships. So we have that the check complex, oh, there we go. We have that the check complex of X at scale R using my r over 2 convention, which is why I chose it, is contained in the viator schrips complex at scale r. All right, this probably makes sense to you, you know, um, based on this picture, right? Um, so, um, right, in the, in the check complex, we have, so these two have the same edge sets. Okay, so these two have the same edge sets in the Euclidean space, okay? But we've seen that, um, well, as we have, might have three edges in the, in the check complex, but no filled in triangle in the viator schrips complex, we necessarily do have the filled in triangle. So the viator schrips complex might be larger. All right, we actually also get a nesting on the other side it turns out that the Rips complex is contained in the check complex if, if you increase the scale. All right, and let me talk about this constant two, which I wanna redraw in red, just to emphasize it. Okay, this constant two, two R, that works in any metric space. 
you can improve that constant too if you're in the particular example of Euclidean space. And that's, uh, you can look up Jung's theorem for what might be an optimal bound for this constant two in Euclidean space. So I'll just say C Jung's theorem. All right, thanks so much for your attention and um, I hope you are interested in, and continue to learn more about Viator strips and check complexes in applied topology. Thanks.